I have um, known Aaron for quite some time now, and I am so excited to have him join our session this morning. Aaron Davis is a nationally recognized speaker, author, and attitude expert. Aaron has worked with numerous corporations and organizations in their quest to explore attitudes, perceptions, assumptions, and bias. He is a proud University of Nebraska alumni earning his degree in psychology. Aaron and his wife, Brooke, reside in Nebraska. I'm sure it's super cold there, Aaron, with their daughter and their two sons. What I appreciate most about Aaron is he doesn't fly in from Nebraska, speak at our community and then fly out. Aaron has become someone that I really consider a community friend, a community partner someone who returns to our community whenever his voice of inspiration and healing is needed, someone who has become part of our community of healers. He is passionate about mental health. He is passionate about social equality. He is passionate about suicide prevention and passionate about helping others thrive. Please join me in welcoming my dear friend, Aaron Davis. Good morning. <clears throat> Danelle, thank you so much. Aaron, how you doing? Good to see everybody. Um, and I apologize for the voice. This is number two uh, already uh, for me here on the, uh, on the uh, Midwest, if you would say. So thank you so much. And Danelle, I'll tell you something. All you good folks out there in the West Coast, chilly to use probably like, I don't know, 40s or 50s. It was 18 degrees this morning. When I started my truck in the garage, and it was it was 20 degrees in my garage, so you know that's a different type of cold. I'm not sure if you're used to that type of cold, but you know what? We woke up and we're here, and if nothing else, we're here. And I got towards the tail end of the last the last exercise, and uh, talk about relaxing. We all need to do that more often. At least I know I do. In the chat line, real fast, what I want you to put in the chat right now: one being awesome. Five, and I'm gonna do this later again at the end of the day. One being awesome, you're doing awesome. Five, you're just like, dude, I'm on the, I'm on the call. All right, I'm here. So one through five, one being great, and five is like, brother, I'm just on the call. All right. Oh yeah, I like them. They're rolling in. They're rolling in. And you guys are quick. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, the you got a, you got a you got a, a group ready to go this morning, D. I like that. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and I put down for myself, I put a two down. Or is why I didn't put one. Now, there's been some days it's been a five two. There have been some days where I was like, you know what? I woke up. I'm here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And there are days where, hey, just be grateful for that. But I'm a two today, and that it is freezing outside, y'all. Uh, three days ago, it was sixty. And now it's like six, you know? So in the Midwest, we have a very uh, bipolar weather. It just kind of does whatever it wants to do when it wants to do it. So this morning, I'm not gonna hold you long at all. I believe in the five Bs of a good talk, especially when it's Zoom, five Bs of a good talk. And that's to be brief, brother, be brief. Be brief, brother, be brief. And some of you right now looking at this, okay, what does he mean by that? You'll get it later on, I promise you. You'll catch up with it. But I do want this time to go by quick. And if we can go to the next slide, please. There we go. All my all my handles are right there. If you're an Instagram person, it's actually if you go to Aaron Davis Attitude Expert, which is on Instagram, Aaron Davis Attitude Expert on Instagram. Twitter's the same right there. If you go to Facebook, it's Aaron Davis Presentations. And if it's LinkedIn, you just go to Aaron Davis. So I'd love to keep in touch with you. And I'm looking forward to this afternoon and this morning as well. If we can go to the next slide, please. First day of Zoom meetings, folks, you are ready to go. I mean, you got your glasses on and, and, and your dress and you're ready to roll. About the 14th day of this stuff, you're like, look, dude, I am done with Zooms. If you were sick of Zooms for a yeah, put why if you're put a for a yes if you're tired of Zooms and just put a no, I keep doing this all day. Put a why. And if you're <laughs> Nancy put a whole bunch of wise on there and so did Brooke, Ariel put a, oh, Ariel's like, no, I can do this. There we go. Lots of wise, lots of wise, lots of wise. Yes, keep them coming. Erica with quite exclamation points. Yes, 
Michelle almost ran out of Ys on her keyboard. She put sometimes yes, sometimes no. Teresa, I get that. And I agree. Anna says, yes, 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 yes. Why, 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 why? Folks, I am kind of the same thing. We got this, Vanessa. I like that. No better than no Zoom. Exactly, Jennifer. Here's what I will say to that. I love Zooms in that I, haven't, I don't have to leave my house. There's no airplanes to catch, the convenience. You know, I got a t-shirt on here. And quite honestly, I would be wearing shorts, but when it's 20 degrees outside, I got sweats on and some flip-flops. I'm just going to keep it real with you this morning, folks. But it does get cumbersome. But you know what? It's just like Jennifer mentioned in there. We got to be grateful that we still can communicate and see another face through Zoom. Imagine if we didn't have this, this piece of technology and we're just constantly like this, seeing no faces, no facial expressions, et cetera. So uh, in fact, one last comment right there, uh, Sarah goes, I'm enjoying Zooms, but don't even ask if I fully pay attention. <laughs> hey, well, Sarah, I appreciate your honesty and transparency. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm guilty of the same one. I'm on a few boards and there's been times I've been doing laundry and cooking dinner or banking lunch while I've been on some Zoom. So I get that. If we go to the next one, please. Next slide. With video, again, we're got our glasses, we're together. With audio only, sometimes we're like, where am I at today? I get it. If we can go to the next one, please. For me, this is what it feels like, folks. That's what it feels like for me. When there's no cameras, and I'm so glad to see all of the different cameras that are on here because it does... Uh, it does help me out big time. I'm just being honest with it. I love when I can see other faces in, on the monitor that it helps out. And that picture right there, talking to a wall, my wife made the smart remark and said, you know, that's what it's like talking to you sometimes, you know, just to a wall, no expression. I'm like, you know what? You didn't have to go there. Okay. Don't start nothing. Ain't going to be nothing, but I get it. I totally get it. If we go to the next one, please. That's what you are. Every single monitor, every single one of you on here, you're heroes. Think about when you were a kid. I think it's uh, fitting that Saturday is Halloween in that we get all dressed up. Some people don't. I know some people don't, but historically people get dressed up and they dress up as heroes or someone they admire, or just a character, if you would. Folks, that's what you do every day. You're heroes. You create experiences, safe experiences in those relationships. And that's what this is about. How do we give people hero type experiences? You do that every day, especially in what you're dealing with right now. We go to the next slide, please. What do you do? He was create safe places. Heroes create safe places. You think about the chaos that's going on in our world today. You think about what's going on on your part of the country, obviously the forest fires in the midst of a pandemic with our numbers, et cetera, uh, the economy, unemployment. It's, it's just a crazy time right now. But what you do every day is you create safe places, safe experience because you are heroes. Now I know at times it's hard to look at yourself as that, but that's what you do. You create safety, you create clarity. That's what heroes do for us is they create safe places, safe experiences, even when we're dealing with chaos. If we go to the next slide, please. That's what you do. It's a goofy character right there, but it's the truth nevertheless. I want you to think about the number of calls, emails, Zooms, and correspondence you've had with an individual, with a mother, with a father, with a child, with an aunt, or with an uncle, and you created a safe place by giving them answers, by giving them clarity, by giving them a bit of comfort amongst all the chaos. You create safe places and experiences. Don't forget what you truly do. I know sometimes it gets hit with all the minutia of paperwork and uh, uh, some of the red tape you have to deal with. I know sometimes organization and foundation versus foundation, it gets competitive at times, but don't forget what you do collectively. You create safe places and experiences. If we go to the next slide, please. It's my mom and dad, it's a family picture. Now, some of you may not be as old as I am, I'm 46 years old, and that was kind of the standard family setup, or there, or there we have another one where there's this old fashioned bookshelf behind us that you can tell is fake, you know? And it's, it's me in the middle right there, me with the big jug head, and I actually had hair all of those years ago. 
But the one to my uh, to my immediate left, the bottom left, that's my brother Daniel. To the bottom right, that's my sister Michelle. My sister Michelle lives in Gainesville, Florida, and she sent me a text this morning and said she's drinking coffee on her porch. I said, don't ever message me that again, okay? My deck has snow on it. The picture right there is my father. The picture to the left is my mother. And the top left picture there is my brother Miles. The one right behind me is my brother Mark. Uh, all the boys live here in town. And my other sister to the right, she lives in Tallahassee, Florida. Folks, my parents were my heroes. They created safe experiences and safe places. The relationships that our family, bond, uh, our family bonds are amazing. For a second, I want you to picture what your family picture looks like. All of our families look different. All of ours look different. I know Erin Kennedy said she used to live in Chicago. I miss those snowy mornings. Well, Erin, I tell you what, I will send you some snow and you can have all the snow that you want. <laughs> but I see where you're at. <laughs> I was born in Tallahassee, went to college there. Blake, yes, hopefully it was not Florida State. <laughs> so think about this for a second. I want you to take about, take about a minute. In the chat line, I want you to put in there, I know all of our family dynamics were different. Some of us were raised by our parents, some by just by mom, some of us by dad. Maybe it was grandparents, an aunt or an uncle or a different setup. In the, in the chat, I want you to just list one thing that stands out about your child, one pleasant experience that stands out about your childhood. Maybe it was the fair, maybe it was summertime, maybe it was Christmas. Just type in one thing real quick that stands out about your childhood. For me, I'm gonna say Thanksgiving softball. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to keep it coming. Yosemite, casseroles, the outdoors, camping, Mexico, Trinity family, jumping in leaves with my brother, soccer, camping, rivers, Halloween. Yes, surfing. That's hard to do here in Nebraska. Dirt biking, being together, garden, Christmas, vacationing, choir. Yes, art, holidays, great grandma's house. You bet. Parties competition and ice skating, family gatherings, barbecue, grandma's house, the beach, all of these things, Vietnamese New Year, yes, vacation in Chico, when I lived in Southern Cal, yes, ripping and running with friends, Vernon, I see you, <laughs> yes, all of these experiences, sometimes focus our experiences from childhood that help us through adulthood as well, horseback riding, Chris was making tamales, yes, those are the experiences you want to help to continue to create for the kids that you serve today, for their families, even amongst the chaos. Go back to the memories. We go to the next slide, please. Here's someone that was a great, that created a great childhood experience for me. Coach Frank Sheridan, the Native American that's in the middle of the picture right there. He was my first basketball coach and he was in a wheelchair. And Frank Sheridan was one of the most influential men in my life besides my dad at a very early age. He created amazing experiences that I've taken with me. I'm 46 years old now that I still can hear his voice. I can still hear some of his lessons. Um, I can still remember him. One of his biggest sayings was this, be careful what you say to yourself. Be careful what you say to yourself. And if you, if other people talk to you the way that you talk to you, would they still be your friends? If other people talk to you the way that you talk to you, would they still be your friends? He was huge when it came to self-talk in basketball. And he was teaching us these things. Heck, I was like eight years old. So we're talking almost 40 years ago. And I can still hear Frank's voice saying that, be careful what you say to yourself. See, he was creating a childhood experience for me that I would never forget. You are creating childhood experiences for those people that you serve. They will never forget. Would you be friends with the people if, you talk, if they talked to you the way that you talked to yourself? Be careful of the conversations that go on in the most precious real estate that we have, this six inches between our ears. Can we go to the next picture, please. Yes, Mr. Willie Banks, my second grade teacher. Now this picture is about five years ago I went back to my old elementary school and I uh, spoke at my old elementary school and Mr. Willie Banks was still there. He just retired about two years ago, but folks, I struggled with reading terribly. And as you can see from my home office here, up there, I got a lot of books, lots of books. 
And you can see over there, more books. And downstairs in my library, I have more books. Why? Because a second grader, I think in second grade, you're about nine years old, eight years old, give or take. There was a teacher that told my mom at a conference that Mrs. Davis, Aaron will never read at the level of his peers. Snaps. That's messed up. Never. Aaron will never read at the level of his peers. And my mom, being such the classy lady that she was, she goes, man, with all due respect, yes, he will. And that man right there, Mr. Willie Banks, he breathed into me. He saw things in me I didn't see in myself. He encouraged me if I got one sentence right without stuttering, without talking fast. And even as you can tell now, all these years later, when I get excited, I start talking fast. And Mr. Banks will always tell me, pretend like you have peanut butter in your mouth with peanuts. It's hard to talk fast with peanut butter and peanuts in your mouth. And I still remember those lessons that every time I got a sentence right, a paragraph right, this man would remind me and encourage me. And he gave me experience I will never forget. And our relationship is just as strong today as it was 38 years ago. You're somebody's Mr. Willie Banks. You're somebody's Coach Sheridan. If we can go to the next picture, please. Coach Tom Osborne, University of Nebraska. I used to play football in Nebraska, and I happen to have my one of my old jerseys here handy because I was speaking for a group out in the East Coast this morning. It's got my name on the back and the Nebraska logo, 1994 Orange Bowl. We won the national championship in college football, all those great things. And anybody knows about Nebraska football now? Yeah, we're not doing so good, so keep your comments to yourself, please. It still kind of hurts. But uh, somebody types in Huskies. I knew that was going to come in there. But Coach Osborne, that man that you see standing there with me, besides my dad, the most influential person, because you know what? We influence students at different times and different levels of their lives. Somebody said, go Wisconsin Badgers. Linda, hey, disconnect her call right now, Dad Gummit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jeanette, go Big Red. I like it. But Coach Osborne was very influential for me in a different time of my life when I became 18, 19, 20 years old, 21 years old, when I played college football at the University of Nebraska. And I was a member of a national championship team and I was not a superstar. And people said I was fast. Folks, I was not fast, okay? I was scared. When someone 6'5", 260 chases you, you run as fast as you possibly can, all right? But the lessons that coach always told us is that you're never as bad as people think you are. You're never as good as what they think you are. Stay even, stay even killed all the time. Folks, I have a lot of rings, uh, one national championship ring, lots of conference rings and bull rings. And he always told us, it's not the rings you get, it's what you become as a result of getting them. So folks, with all your accolades and with all your progress, it's not the goal necessarily to reach, it's what you become. What has COVID taught you to become? What are these forest fires that you're dealing with on a regular basis? Maybe some of you that are on this call personally are dealing with it. What are you becoming as a result? What are you being more grateful for? What are you cherishing more of? The things we thought were important really just aren't important when it comes down to situations like you're dealing with every day. What are you becoming as a result of what you're experiencing? What are you becoming as a result of your experiencing? See, we can even be bitter or better. These situations that we're dealing with can make us bitter, can make us mad. Why is this happening to us? Man, enough of the forest fire. Send some rain, do something. We can become bitter or we can become better. You know, in the chat section, Jesse, I love that radical. I got to write this one down. Radically empathetic. I love that. What are you becoming? Drop something in the, in the text, in the, in the comment section. What are you becoming as a result of what you're dealing with? Kate, yes, flexible. Scott said, a better father. Amen, brother. Me and you both. Absolutely. Patient. Adele, I love that name. I'm becoming stronger, better version of myself. Patient and flexible. Stronger in my faith, glory. Yes, me and you both. Deeper, kinder, accepting, Fatma said. Inner strength, Carly says. Uh, becoming what I don't uh, want to become is why I'm, I'm here. Exactly. Absolutely. We're all there. We're all been there. A better friend, authentically present. I love that. Close to my neighbors. Yes. Brave grateful, resilience, appreciative, patient, more understanding. And see, folks, as I see these streaming down the chat line, all of these things we're putting, accepting what is important in life, more compassionate, a better listener, self-advocating, grounding. Uh, yes, all of these things that we're, we're listing, we can become those things. We can become stronger in those things. We can not only create those experiences for those we serve, but we can create them for ourselves. 
hopeful, listener, more passionate, appreciating each moment of peace, yes. Immune to negativity, Lord, tell me about it, yes. Adaptive, I love those, I love them. If we can go to the next slide, please. Abundant. Next question after you real fast is this. Who were, your, who were some of your heroes? Drop them in there. Who were some of your heroes? Who created safe places for you? Dad, mom, grandparents, fifth grade teacher, grandma, aunt, mom, Mr. F Miss Fieglis, fifth grade, yes. Brene Brown, she's good, absolutely. Big sister, grandma, absolutely. All the above, Sarah, yes. My dad, Cecilia. Obama, someone said. All of my sports coaches, yes. Coaches have a voice that go for a lifetime. Yes, Harriet Tubman, yes. A teacher, my parents' friends. Pima Choron, Alexa said that, yes. Big brother, Jonah, in-laws and coworkers. Norma says, Miss Patterson, my mother, Deanna, says there. Grandma says, Car uh, Wendy right there, yes. Uncle Lou, Laura, everybody's got a good Uncle Lou, yes. Sunday school teacher, Sarah, absolutely. BFF for 55 years, Tina. Tina, wow, Becca, that is awesome. YMCA director, Jenny, yes. Therapist, Alexis, yes. Me as you as well, yes. Spiritual mentor, Margie, yes. Mom and dad, grandparents, all these people. Now, I want you to think about this. Who were some of your heroes? And I want you to think about this. What's, what are some of their characteristics that you can adapt to continue that legacy? What are some of their characteristics that you can adapt to carry on their legacies, to continue to create experiences and relationships with those whom you serve? If we can go to the next one, please. You provide calm and chaos. See folks here in the Midwest, we see these images that you are living. I see the images that you are living through. Our first responders, people like Danelle's husband and his colleagues. I'm seeing on TV the things that you're experiencing and many of you are, are seeing this firsthand. And when everybody is driving out of those neighborhoods, we see our bold and brave first responders drive it into the chaos. While we're all exiting, they're entering and laying their lives on the line for us. Talk about heroes. Those guys, men and women, along with yourselves are the heroes because those people driving out are going to see the likes of you with their hands on their head, they're grabbing their dogs, uh, a piece of clothing, a photo album, a camera, anything they can. And they're coming to you and saying, what do I do? You are the heroes that provide calm and chaos and try to change those experiences and develop right relationships and look into the eyes of those young men and young women saying, you know what? We are here to help and you are heroes in their eyes. We can go to the next slide, please. You listen. You listen. All of them have a story. They're sharing their pain. They're sharing their fears. They're sharing uh, their anxiety. They all have a story and you just listen. You just take the time to listen. Heroes provide calm and chaos. And heroes, heroes are very good at listening. Thank you for listening. If we go to the next one, please. See, you, you guys and gals there at North Valley, you don't just you don't just talk about it and throw something up on a Facebook page or, or a slogan or a tweet or an Instagram post or something on LinkedIn. You said, we're going to put our money and our action where our mouth is. We're going to do something about it. We're going to match funds. We're going to help in any way we possibly can to, to change some of those negative experiences some of these kids and families are going through and let them see there is someone to help. We will stand in the gap. We will be that hero for you during this time of chaos, during this time of pain, during this time of uncertainty. That's what you do. And I know sometimes with all the calls and the, like I said before, all the red tape, et cetera, the cause can get lost sometimes. Don't lose sight of what you do. Please don't lose sight of what you do. If we go to the next one, please. You got it right there at your own, your own place. I was on your Facebook page and I read up on Sheriff Juanita, and I looked at what he did and what he's been doing through this. Heroes lead through actions. It's easy to just say, 
uh, that you're part of, uh, of something big, but it's different when you show and do and prove that you're a part of something, of saving lives, of changing lives, of being an ear to listen to, a shoulder to cry on, a, play, a resource center to say, hey, I'm going to direct you here, here, and here to help you and your family to get back on your feet, to dry a dry, to dry a, a, a dry a eye, a tear, a teardrop, a kid that's afraid, a parent that's afraid, a dad that's afraid. You are those heroes, along with Sheriff Ania right there. Don't forget what you do. You all have different uniforms, different responsibilities, but you're about creating safe places and experiences through the relationships that you forge through trauma at times, unfortunately. If we go to the next one. You know, when I was out in Chico last time, I love flying into Sacramento. I usually fly usually from um, Denver sometimes Salt Lake, but when it's from Denver, I know when I'm coming in there, because you start seeing those mountains, and they change, and it's just beautiful, and you see beyond those mountains. Folks, continue to help your neighbors see beyond the current chaos. That's what heroes do. Heroes show the other side of pain. Heroes show the other side of chaos. Heroes show the other side of uncertainty. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, you know what? We're gonna walk through this together. You bring out the proverbial microscope, the proverbial lens and say, we can, we're gonna help you see beyond this. We're gonna get there together. And yeah, there's gonna be obstacles, but I'm, we're gonna walk with you through those things. I want you to see beyond the current chaos. And that is easier said than done. Because your speaker has a hard time with this at times. When is this pandemic going to get alleviated just a little bit? The numbers here in the Midwest keep spiking up and like, whoa, 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 whoa. Look beyond the current chaos. And it's like the question I asked you before, what am I becoming as a result of what we're dealing with? Patience. Keep helping people see beyond the flames, the smoke, the just the, the feeling of unsettled and fear, quite honestly. Keep helping them see beyond. We can go to the next one, please. Hero, see everyone. Regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of gender, regardless of background, heroes see everyone, they appreciate everyone. Can we go to the next one, please? And Olivia, yes, we're struggling. We're all struggling in some shape or form. See, I see them all. I see them all. See, I'm not colorblind. I'll talk more about this later. I'm not colorblind. I see color. When we tell, I, when people say this, and I know they mean it at a place of goodness the majority of the time, hey, everybody calls me AD. It's Aaron Davis, but it's AD. Oh, AD, I don't even see color. I'm colorblind, bro. Cool. Well, you know what, folks? I'm not colorblind. I see you. When we tell someone that we're colorblind, that basically disregards everything that makes that person unique. It's not about being colorblind. Just don't be a racist. That's what it's about. When our hearts change, our eyes will take care of themselves. Those people you serve, you don't care what shade of color they are. It's another human. It's humanity for humanity. That's what it's about. If we go to the next one, please. But we all do have biases. And heroes lean in. If it impacts one, it impacts us all. With the social and racial unrest that's going on right now in our country, hey, what if it impacts one, it impacts all. And until everyone becomes concerned, there's that old saying, until everyone becomes concerned about the things that impact some of us, nothing will change. I love that old quote. Until all of us are outraged by the few, nothing will change. If we go to the next one, please. We all have them. We all have unconscious biases. And quickly through a nutshell, biases and preferences, man, we're all with it. For instance, you may have a favorable bias towards, uh, you think, if you're a Raider fan, <laughs> oh boy, I'm not gonna go there. But if you're a Raiders fan, you may think Seahawks fans, all Raiders fans treat Seahawks fans with respect and dignity. That's favorable. Rachel goes, go Raiders. Yes. Now, you may think if you're a Raiders fan, you tend not to like the Broncos and the Chiefs. You may say all Broncos fans are idiots. Yeah, kind of true. I won't say anything. But yes, you may think that. That's an unfavorable bias. Chargers all the way, Aaron. Yes. We all have some biases. If we can go to the next one, please. And what are unconscious biases? <laughs> Let's be careful, go Raiders. Unconscious biases, folks, it's like the bottom of the iceberg, him below the water. 
We may not know they're always there, but they are. And it's important to acknowledge they do exist because folks, we all have biases. The key though, is to address them in a flash of flashlight on them. Can we go to the next one, please? Here's six ways to mitigate unconscious bias. Recognize and accept we all have them. Folks, when I go to small towns, you know what? When I'm the only black thing there, besides the black Angus cow, I get a little nervous here in the Midwest, all right? So I, I know I have biases, all right? And the things that you acknowledge, you can fix. And folks, we have to develop a capacity to use a flashlight in our own lives that what are some biases that I may have? And that's not a one-time thing. We do that daily. Practice constructive uncertainty. Explore awkwardness and discomfort. I tell people all the time, if you only hang out with people that think like you do, you will always only think like you do. It doesn't mean you're going to change how you view the world, but at least have an opinion from someone else to sharpen your own. Explore that awkwardness. Go to places where there's people that are different than you are, all right? Engage with people you consider others. We all have that others or them over there and expose yourself to positive role models in that group and get feedback. Folks, heroes are heroes because they step out of their comfort zones. They step out of their comfort zones. Aaron said, hey amen, I stepped out into North Dakota. Very different than the West Coast. Absolutely. We go to the next one, please, as we wrap this up. I got this right from your Facebook page because I love Ralph Waldo Emerson. And I love that powerful quote right there. You cannot do a kindness. You cannot do a kindness too soon for you never know how soon it will be too late. Folks, you are saving lives and mentalities every day in what you do. You're saving the mental peace. Now, I know in our country right now, we're worried about ventilators and beds as we should be. But you know what I'm concerned about even more so? Mental health. The hammer hasn't even dropped yet, folks. One of my golf buddies, one of my best friends, he's a liquor distributor for a company called Southern Glazers. He says, Aaron, we are up 69%. He goes, we are introducing a new generation to alcoholism, and we are bringing back former alcoholics. Folks, keep providing peace. Keep providing peace, because people are going to things that only galvanize the problem. If we can go to the next one, please. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. That little fellow's got his face fixed, that lip is curled up, and he's got his fist balled up. And folks, more now than never, all of your screens on this camera, you got to keep encouraging each other. Now more than ever, keep encouraging each other, keep providing each other uh, wisdom and insight, because you can do it. Can we go to the last one, please? Folks, that last slide, it's got some information on there. Keep in touch. If you text the word attitude, if you text the word attitude, I'm going to put that in our chat real fast. If you text the word attitude, so text attitude to 33777. If you text the word attitude, I just put that privately. I need to put it to everyone. If you text the word attitude, 33777. You'll get the first three chapters of my book for free, the first three chapters for free, and you'll be included on our video newsletter. Now that comes out about every other week, not every other hour. That is called stalking. That is illegal. All right. It's a 60 second video I send out about every other week. It's called 60 seconds with Aaron. It's very quick. And fortunately, there are thousands across the country and outside the US who use that for their teams for themselves. But if you text the word attitude to 33777, you'll get the first three chapters of the book for free and be on the video newsletter. Folks, I look forward to seeing you as you close your day out later today. Uh, continue to remind yourself that you are heroes and you create experiences and awesome uh, relationships with those you serve. Thanks a bunch. I look forward to seeing you again, guys and gals. God bless you all. We'll see you soon.